common phrase thrown around when you hear people talk about Appalachia is a sense of place. Appalachians really like their homeland, whether it be uh, you know, a cabin tucked down in a holler or a mansion on a hilltop. Appalachians historically have been fiercely attached to their homes. I've often wondered if other uh, inhabitants of the world, people that live in different places, if they have that same attachment to the place they live. But I don't know because I've never lived anywhere but Appalachia. So I'll be interested. Please leave a comment and let me know if you have experienced that. Uh, if you know that people in other areas have that same fierce attachment to their land, to their home, that people in Appalachia do. Loyal Jones wrote a great book, Appalachian Values, that really details the values and kind of the personality traits of people who live in Appalachia. And I'm going to read you a little bit of his chapter on love of place. So one of the first questions asked in the mountains after whose boy or girl are you is where are you from? We are oriented around place. We remember our home place and many of us go back as often as possible. Some of us think about going back for good perhaps to the Nolichucky, Big Sandy, Hiawassee, or Oconalufti, or to Drip Rock, Hanging Dog, Shooting Creek, Decoy, Stinking Creek, Sweetwater, or Sandy Mush. Our place is close in our minds. One fellow said he came from so far back in the mountains, the sun set between his house and the road. Our songs tell of our regard for the land where we were born. Sense of place is one of the unifying values of mountain people and it makes it hard for us to leave the mountains, and when we do, we long to return. The, this fellow died and went to heaven. St. Peter showed him around, and he thought everything was up to expectations. Streets of gold, heavenly choirs, harps, and then he heard these people in the corner of heaven raising an awful commotion, quarreling, complaining, and shouting. He went over to investigate and found they were all chained up. He said to St. Peter, Who are these people? They are Appalachian mountaineers, St. Peter said. Why are they chained to the wall? St. Peter said, If we didn't do that, they'd go home every weekend. Albert Stewart, an Eastern Kentucky poet, reflects a strong sense of place in his poetry, as in this one, Near in Mountains, about his parents. Near in mountains my youth well knows, and under that selfsame star my mother was born on Troublesome Creek. My father was born on Carr. My father rode there to Troublesome Creek and kissed her beneath that star. Then mother came here to live with us, here on the waters of Carr. Fast flow the waters of Troublesome Creek, and strong flow the waters of Carr, that never shall bide by the resting place where mother and father are. O oh, near is the land where my father lived, and Troublesome was never so far, but far and lost my parents lie, high on the ridges of Carr. Isn't that a beautiful poem? And that was by, let's go back and see for sure who it was by, Albert Stewart. That's just lovely. Another poem that uh, Lil John shares in this chapter is from James Steele. So it says, James Steele, a northern Alabama native, now living in Hindman, Kentucky, expressed a feeling of home as well as it has been said in a poem entitled Heritage. I shall not leave these prison and hills, though they topple their barren heads to level earth and the forests slide uprooted out of the sky, though the waters of Troublesome, of Trace Fork, of Sand Lick, rise in single body to glean the valley, to drown lush penny roll, to unravel rail fences, though the sunball strip breaks the ridges into dust and burns its strength into the blistered rock, I cannot leave, I cannot go away. Being of these hills, being one with the fox, stealing into the shadows, one with the newborn foal, the lumbering ox drawing green beech logs to mill, one with the destined feet of man climbing and descending, and one with death rising to bloom again, I cannot go. Being of these hills, I cannot pass beyond. I hope you enjoyed that little excerpt from the Little John's book. It's Appalachian Values. That's a really great book if you've never read it. Um, I've, I've thought about this sense of place a lot over the years as I've researched and studied Appalachia and thought about my homeland, where I'm from. And I'm sure there's some scholar out there that could explain it to you in really great detail, but I like to kind of keep things simple. And in my mind, that love of place, sense of place, comes down to three different points. 
first, there's a sense of belonging to the actual terrain of Appalachia. You know, it's the towering mountains that hover close around you, the sparkling waters in the creeks that, and rivers that sing your heart a merry song. It's the wind in the pines and in the trees that whisper secrets. It's um, the deep, dark collars that make you feel uh, feel the presence of those who've walked them before you, you know, the very inhabitants that used to walk the same trails that you do in Appalachia. So that magical feeling of landscape is part of the sense of place. It's that somehow you, be, you begin to really belong to those mountains and to those trees and to the rivers and to the creeks, to the hollers, to the high tops of, of ridges, you know, you actually become part of that somehow. So I think that's the first reason that people in Appalachia feel that real sense of place. The second reason is generational ties are hard to break in Appalachia. In 2010, David Anderson wrote a great blog post for me, and I'll link that below so you can read it, but about two of his ancestors. He highlighted the fact in the blog post that 10 generations later, descendants from those two ancestors were still living in the same general area. Well, you think about that, 10 generations of people um, kind of passing down the words, like I love to talk about language, passing down their food, their culture, their heritage, the way they look at things, their knowledge. That's a lot of generations of a family living in the same general area. Well, Appalachia as a whole has a familial um, culture. So that means that we're not just really um, close to and, and the importance of family like the family unit, thinking of mom, dad, brother, sister, but also grandparents, both sides of the grandparents, aunts and uncles, cousins, second cousins, third cousins, twice removed, and even the family who lived down the road who wasn't technically family but were like family, you know, that was always at all your family functions. Those ties and relationships are so important. Uh, in my own family, I can think about the generational aspect. Of course, my family's been in uh, Western North Carolina for over nine generations. So that's again a lot of people. But thinking about um, family friends that weren't really family but were like family. I can think of the, the age group of Pap and Granny. They were really close. Then their children, which was me, and then the other family's children were very close. And then even to the next generation, some of those kids and my children are close, have grown up together. So that's just a lot of ties that if you didn't live in the same place, you wouldn't continue to foster those relationships and to, to enrich, enrich each other's lives by whether it was just fellowshipping one with another or helping out when the need arose. But so those generational ties is the second reason that I think the sense of place in Appalachia is so strong. Third, the physical landscape of Appalachia made it an isolated area for generations. Um, people, it was hard to get out of the mountains. It was hard to leave. It was hard to imagine a place outside the mountains that was, you know, to leave, to actually leave home and imagine living in a different place. Now, in today's world, of course, it's not like that. It's not as isolated. Most people have, have their own cars. They could drive. Um, there's airports. You can be on a plane in two hours from my house and go to anywhere in the world that you want to go. But I would argue that some areas of Appalachia are still isolated. Uh, even the area I live in, there's like a joke I've heard my whole life. So I live in the state of North Carolina. Raleigh is my capital. But it, we're so far from Raleigh. We're actually closer to, I think it's like five other state capitals than we are to, the, to Raleigh. And so the joke has been my whole life is that you'll hear people say in this area uh, of Western North Carolina, really the tri-county region here where I live, Cherokee, Clay, and Graham, where the, it, you know if you're bemoaning the fact that maybe uh, Raleigh, somebody in Raleigh made a decision that affected you, or maybe they from you know we don't we get the short end of the stick or something like that. The joke is you'll hear people say Raleigh thinks Asheville in, that North Carolina ends at Asheville. Raleigh thinks at, that North Carolina ends at Asheville. Well, we're two hours past Asheville. So it doesn't end at Asheville, but that's kind of, so see, that's kind of still in an isolated nature. More than, uh, than being technically isolated, like I said, because today we can travel, just those, go back to those generational, so the generation of the same family passing down their thoughts and the way they feel about things. So that's kind of too, and um, it's kind of like, it's, it's fascinating for me to think about. So 
even though things have changed and we're not as isolated, that same mindset of thinking somehow makes you think in that like you're protected, which in one way it's like a protection. So you're protected in this wonderful place where you live. And the other thing is though, in your mind, you just think of being isolated, even though you're technically not. But I do think that's the, those reasons of still some places being isolated, really. And then the kind of the a mindset of that being passed down over the generations, that that's the third reason that sense of place is so strong for most Appalachians. I love to study on the sense of place, about that being one of the values in Appalachia. I love to study on the people that, I'm, that I've known, my experiences in my life, and I really see that, that sense of place, whether it be that people like me who are like I could never live anywhere else are people that's like I had to move off to work but I can't wait to move back I'm gonna move back to my home place you know where I bought a piece of land near Aunt Pearl and I'm gonna live there and I'm so excited about moving back are the people who just find out how wonderful it is to live in Appalachia and they move here um, reminds me of one of my very first interviews was my first interview I guess with Elsie Chastain and the Chastain family and the Wilson family have that generational tie that generation connection that that I was talking about. But anyway, I asked Elsie, I said, well, what do you think about Appalachia? And he kind of chuckled and he said, well, I reckon if I didn't live here, I'd be getting here as fast as I could. So I, I love studying and thinking about those things. And they remind me of this um, song, Bob Amos, if you're ever familiar with the group Front Range, they were a blue, bluegrass group, they no longer are together. But he wrote some amazing songs, Bob Amos did, and the one I really love is The Hills That I Call Home. Now he's not talking about my area of Appalachia, but it's still just a beautiful song that talks about that, that sense of place. And I will read you my favorite line from it. So it says, Yet I found no peace within me till the day that I returned. For there's two things you can count on as the troubled world we face. Every season has an ending and every person has a place. So Appalachia is definitely my place. <laughs> Yeah.
So there's so many things a lot of times that I read that scholars who don't live in Appalachia or not from Appalachia that they write about the area and I think, well, that's, that's just not really right or that's, you know, they kind of get it wrong. But that one, sense of place, that one I think they get right. There is that, just that really strong sense of place where people love love their their home their homeland they call it or their home place uh, it's just a really strong feeling and i certainly feel it here where i live and i would be the i guess the fourth generation of my family to live here on this land so i really I, that really means something to me when i think about those that walked walked the path before me i hope you enjoyed this little talk about sense of place and how that's one of the values that appalachians have and i hope you'll leave me a comment and tell me do you have those same feelings or maybe you don't even live in appalachia but you have those same feelings but mostly i hope you'll drop back by often as i celebrate appalachia